Hello everyone, welcome to another LinkedIn live session um, by, Celsius, by the Celsius Ben team and in partnership with our friends over at Own Backup. And uh, just while we're waiting for everybody to join, I'm just going to give a quick overview, um, but I'm not the expert here. We, we're joined by an expert, so yes. Um, so Salesforce Shield is for organizations that need X security and compliance requirements. So you may have heard of it before. You may even have bought it. You may be getting started with it, or you may have no idea what to do with it. Um, but as a Salesforce platform product, um, Shield works across all the Salesforce cloud products um, that your organization uses um, to support um, by reducing data risks all in, in all that areas of the business. So we'll be covering a lot of useful information in this session, not only speaking about the four pillars that make up Salesforce Shield, but also how you can be successful while implementing it and beyond that. Um, well, as we've promised to deliver this in 30 minutes, we'd better get started. So I'm Lucy Maslin and I head up operations at salesforcebend.com. I've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for eight years and until a couple of weeks ago, had not really touched a lot on Shield. So I've gone, come on a learning journey as well. And I'm joined by Devin. Devin, why don't you give us a give Absolutely. Us your, your pitch? Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Lucy, and for having us on today. Uh, I'm Devin, I'm a senior solution engineer at Own Backup. Um, so I work with our customers um, in pre and post sales to help them secure their Salesforce environment. And um, been with Own Backup about a year now. I came in uh, from an acquisition a year ago and uh, from a system integrator that um, did a lot of work solely on Salesforce Shield. So I have a lot of history um, with the Salesforce Shield platform uh, with some of its nuances, common challenges and best practices. So yeah, really appreciate you all having me on today and looking forward to the, uh, the, the discussion. Fabulous. Well, let's get started. All right, cool. So let's dive in. So um, please, uh, we'll be monitoring the chat for questions as those come in, but we'll, we'll start with the high level. So what is Salesforce Shield? So um, Salesforce does a tremendous job providing the infrastructure, right? right? So your hardware, um, network services, um, the, the underlying infrastructure that they provide is phenomenal. Um, but with the Salesforce platform, as many customers know, there is a shared uh, security responsibility model, which means that um, it is a shared uh, responsibility between the vendor as well as the customer. So um, Salesforce provides the infrastructure, but how that's configured needs to be managed by the customer and the customer is ultimately responsible for the risk that comes with that. So that's where Salesforce Shield uh, provides another layer of protection to help customers manage the shared responsibility model um, security controls. And specifically, there are additional controls that come with Salesforce Shield that is not provided with Salesforce out of the box. Um, so there's a few different capabilities, which we'll touch on in a moment, but this is for customers who have sensitive data in Salesforce, regulated industries, um, medium and large and even small in some cases, but where there's sensitive data in Salesforce, that sensitive data needs to be protected and Salesforce Shield uh, provides the additional controls for customers to be able to do that. So that's the high level as far as what it is really, again, you know, mapping it back to the shared responsibility model where Salesforce provides that infrastructure and then for um, at the the management of the shared responsibility model, there are additional controls available. If we look at what exactly is included with Salesforce Shield. Now, it can be licensed um, with a full umbrella with each of these individual components or um, included as a part of that umbrella, or the components can be licensed individually based on regulatory requirements um, and requirements of individual businesses and customers. So it's really unique to your business and um, it is um, a significant investment, so you want to make sure that you're getting the full value out of that. And we'll really dive deeper into that later in the call here. But if we touch briefly on what the individual components are, we'll start with platform encryption. And what this is, is it allows you to natively encrypt data at rest at the field level and for your files and attachments so that the data is protected at rest. And it has the highest uh, level of encryption within Salesforce with 256-bit AES and it is encrypted uh, at rest. So we'll get more into that, but it's a native encryption at rest capability, which Salesforce uh, does not provide out of the box at the field level. So it extends it to 
um, a, a wider range of fields and your files and attachments, um, again, with that, that highest level of encryption. The second component of Shield is Field Audit Trail. And um, this allows you to extend your history tracking for up to 10 years. So if you have legal compliance requirements or just from a business perspective, you can be able to retain that field history for longer than 18 months and 24 months in the API. Uh, that's a very common requirement. Um, and Field Audit Trail uh, has great capability to be able to do that. Um, and the last couple here, event monitoring. This is user activity monitoring. So this, again, is only available with Salesforce Shield and very valuable component of Shield. What are users doing in the system from a, both a security and a performance standpoint? You can track user events um, and there's a lot of great features that come with event monitoring so you can see what your do users are doing within the system. And lastly is Einstein Data Detect. And this is new, it's been added uh, fairly recently as another component of Shield and is included um, with uh, your Shield license where what Einstein Data Detect will do is automatically scan for sensitive data. So certain patterns like credit card number, email, social security number, and then it will show you based on that where you might have that within your Salesforce org. So that's the high level. We'll really dive deeper into um, some of the specifics respective to each component now, um, but know that each individual component can be licensed by itself or um, the full umbrella can be purchased as well. So you have both of those options. So let's dive into platform encryption, your native encryption at rest. And um, if we take a look at a slide here, we'll just start with what is platform encryption at a high level and then touch on what it is not. And um, what it does is it encrypts um, this in the data center and it is stored as ciphertext. So it it switches plain text into ciphertext so that that data is encrypted at rest. Um, something that's really important uh, for a point of clarification is that um, your access, your field level security, it's still controlled with the native uh, field level security. So platform encryption is mostly transparent to end users. So it's not gonna be masking the data. It's not gonna be obfuscating it in Salesforce. Um, it is mostly transparent to users within the system, just encrypted at, at rest within the data center. And I say mostly transparent because uh, there's more nuances um, to it, such as um, if you encrypt a field that is used in a report filter or list view, then that can have an impact on the visibility within that specific uh, report or list view. And we'll, we'll touch more on that later in the demo. So a um, couple other points here related to encryption is that a key value of platform encryption is that customers have customer controlled keys. So they have full control over the rotation of the keys. And there are a few different key options with um, bring your own key. Um, so customers who have a key management infrastructure in place can um, bring their own key and use that as a part of platform encryption. Um, and that's one option many enterprise customers choose to go with. Um, that can take some time um, initially. So sometimes customers will use the Salesforce generated key initially um, just to get platform encryption um, up and running and then migrate to BYOK, bring your own key uh, over time after they've settled in. And the last key option is cache only. And this provides a tunnel um, over the key itself so that the benefit here is that the data um, and the key, there's no way that Salesforce will really be able to access that. These uh, are for customers who are incredibly security conscious and there's some implementation considerations there, but cash only key is a, another great key option. Um, what it is not, I touched on this a little bit, but it's not whole disk encryption, it's at the field level and for your files and attachments, it does not obfuscate the data. Um, the data is still mostly transparent to your end users. So, um, if we keep going, so touched on this a little bit, but data is selectively encrypted at the field level. Files and attachments um, are binary, meaning that there's a setting, um, an encryption policy where you just set um, if you're going to encrypt files and attachments. And then um, going forward, all new files and attachments that are uploaded will be encrypted at rest. And then if you would like to encrypt existing files and attachments, you can just reach out to Salesforce support and they will help you with that. Cool, so um, last uh, point here on platform encryption and then we'll shift gears into our next component, but there are two different encryption schemes and um, this is for your field level encryption here. So um, probabilistic was the original form of encryption that uh, came out with Shield. 
a few years ago. It is the most secure form because it has a fully randomized initialization vector. And just think of an initialization vector for those maybe not familiar with that as your starting variable for the encryption scheme. So it's fully randomized um, with that starting variable, which therefore makes it more secure. And we have an example of that um, here where you have the same uh, field um, name, so account name and the same input text across different records. So these are two, di two different Bobs or two different San Diego cities on two separate records within Salesforce. And you can see that the cipher text is then fully randomized even with the same input text. So the reason I mentioned that is that um, the issue with probabilistic or from a functionality standpoint is that while it's very secure, it can have an impact on functionality in the org. So Salesforce then came out with a great um, option with deterministic encryption. Um, also known as filter preserving. And this gives you the ability to maintain some of those uh, filtering capabilities. So um, it still uses the strongest level of um, encryption with the 256-bit AES uh, advanced encryption standard. Uh, where it's different is that it has a static initialization vector or a static starting variable, which allows it to be able to match different pieces of data together and based on the static IV, and therefore you're able to maintain some of those filtering and functionality benefits. So if we take a look at the table in the bottom right here, I can see that for the account city, um, San Diego, on one record where that is a value of a field on one record and then on another, those will have the same cipher text, which then allows them to be kept uh, within the filtering capabilities. So a slight difference there and probabilistic is more secure, but deterministic is still very secure and a great option to be able to maintain a lot of the functionality benefits. Cool, so um, we'll keep going here. Um, we'll, we'll shift gears into field audit trail and field audit trail um, gives you that extended history tracking. So Salesforce um, provides 20 fields per object or 18 months uh, within the UI and then 24 months within the API. So Field Audit Trail extends that to 60 fields per object for up to 10 years. Um, so very valuable from a security standpoint, obviously to be able to track uh, your sensitive data for an extended point of time, but also just from an operational and business standpoint, being able to have um, all of those changes on your fields for up to 10 years. Um, and it stores the old value, the new value in the related list, and then we'll move that into the big object to take a look at in a moment. But the high level is that Field Audit Trail will, will really stretch that uh, tracking capability for number of fields and the total amount of time up to 10, uh, 10 years. So cool. So if we look at a little bit of how Field Audit Trail works, and we'll touch on this in a, in a brief demo here shortly, but um, it will allow you to set policies for when fields will be removed from the related list in Salesforce. So you set your tracking, they move to the account history, and then after X amount of months, we would like to remove them from that related list within the platform and move them into the field history archive. So you can configure policies with Field Audit Trail, not only for that, but then also after X number of years, whether that's one to 10 years, um, when you permanently delete those changes. So if you're working with legal or compliance, you can set those retention policies uh, based on your organization's requirements. Cool, so last uh, last uh, couple slides here, then we'll jump into a brief demo, but event monitoring. So event monitoring um, gives you the ability to monitor user activity within Salesforce. And there's a big spaghetti chart here. I'm gonna keep it high level, I promise, but um, event monitoring is very powerful from a security uh, standpoint, but also from just operationally and being able to monitor performance. And the way event monitoring works is it monitors user activity within the system uh, through the browser, um, the mobile app, and the API. And from there, there are objects where then those events or specific um, things that users are doing in the system, whether they're viewing a certain page or downloading a report, they're running a report with sensitive data in it, or if certain reports are taking longer to load, there's a robust set of events that Salesforce gives you the ability to monitor. And then you can do things like be able to uh, block and notify based on that, which we'll touch on. And you can also um, have those really streamed into um, your enterprise seam, your security information and event management system. So many customers will choose to bring that into a Splunk or a QRadar. Uh, something we'll touch on that Salesforce provides is the Einstein Analytics app, which comes with event monitoring. 
out of the box. You have two licenses with it if you purchased event monitoring, and that is a pre-built dashboard for you to get immediate time to value out of it. So event monitoring provides great capability to monitor user activity and then be able to ingest the data so that you can really see what is happening across your org. So if we look at, there's really two different event types with event monitoring, or not event types, there's two different capabilities really. There's your core event monitoring where it's updated over the course of a few hours where you can see different events. And then there is real time event monitoring where you can see events happening in real time. And um, the uh, legacy event monitoring looks at security, performance and user adoption, um, really anything that happens within the platform. And you can see very granular details of what users are doing. And all of these events are stored in the event log file standard object. So you can query that object and then um, do the analysis and forensics uh, based on that. So the uh, legacy event monitoring is great from security performance and adoption standpoint. Um, Salesforce fairly recently, a couple of years ago, re released the real-time event monitoring capability. And this is incredibly powerful from a security standpoint because you can monitor uh, real uh, events in real time, literally. So this is the scope of this is really focused only on security, um, but it allows you to catch things that are potentially an incident before they really become a problem. And there's some powerful features where you can block and notify based on that as well. Um, and if we look at some of the specifics here, there are some event types here um, where you can see what is available. Again, these are all um, especially valuable from a security standpoint where we can see if there are any report anomalies um, where users all of a sudden, they're about to leave the organization and then they export a report with 20,000 records in it. Um, we can see a potential stuffing event when if there's potentially a brute force attack and um, someone, an unauthorized user, is able to authenticate into the system. You're able to be alerted based on that. So in the interest of time, we won't have the time to go through each of these individual events, but know there is a lot of uh, real-time event monitoring events available that you can stream and then be able to detect in real time. And, and an important point to call out while we're on here, and you can see it in the bottom, but um, all events are stored in the big object for up to six months. Um, so you're able to really have the ability to do forensics on those and report on them uh, for that amount of time. But then you also have others which are stored for up to 10 years. And um, with Own Backup, we will help you back up some of the standard events as well. But um, robust set of events here that Salesforce allows you to stream. Um, last uh, slide, and we'll, we'll jump into the demo here is a very powerful feature of event monitoring is transaction security policies. And what transaction security policies allow you to do are block and notify um, in real time. So based on a set of events that you can see here. So if a user uh, downloads a report with a number of sensitive fields in it, then block and notify or force them to do a multi-factor authentication. So transaction security policies, this is an event we see a lot of customers um aren't taking full advantage of um, a lot of customers are doing a great job with it and it's incredibly powerful so um we definitely want to help customers uh get the full value out of the transaction security policies capability cool so um if we jump into a quick demo now and take a look at the path to value for shield and in the interest of time we will um, really start with einstein data detect in platform encryption first and the reason for that is um, Einstein Data Detect will allow you to set policies and scan for your sensitive fields. And that is a great input to what needs to be encrypted at rest, right? And with encryption at rest and shield and security controls more broadly, data classification um, is really a great way to start to be able to define how you're going to go protect that data and then use it as an input to inform how those controls are applied, whether it be with shield or additional controls as well. So. Um, right now, um, we'll go ahead and pivot into the demo, uh, focusing on Einstein Data Detect and platform encryption. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen. Um, you should be able to see my Salesforce or great. So um, now we are in Salesforce. We have Einstein Data Detect up. Einstein Data Detect is a managed package. Again, it's licensed as a part of Shield, and it will allow you to scan across your entire environment where you might have sensitive data. Um, so it's looking for certain patterns like credit cards, social security number, email, um, URLs, um, IP addresses, and then it will show you based on that where you might have that information in your org. So I had a recent scan that ran here, but um, before we dive into that, 
Um, this is all driven by policies within Detect. So for example, here, I have my sensitive data scan policy and it's an incredibly intuitive interface that Salesforce has for this, where now I can see all the objects that we would like to scan in my policy here. I'm just looking across account, case and contacts, and then we'll set which patterns we would like to look for. And Salesforce has predefined logic that will allow you to scan for this. So we can look for credit card, email, and those other items I mentioned, and then set the fields we would like to scan. So very common example, right, is if you have your support agent who um, has put you know, sensitive information or someone unintentionally in a description field on a case or in the comments, how are you able to identify that and make sure that you're mitigating it appropriately? So Einstein makes it very simple to put those policies in place and then we can scan across the entire organization and see where those are. So now if I dive into the scan results, it will show me within my org where I have sensitive data um, that I need to review and make sure that we're protecting that. So now I see that um, there are a few different objects and fields with 65,000 uh, records that potentially have sensitive patterns in fields. And we can look at it by specific objects. So now I see these certain fields on the account need to be reviewed. I have social security numbers, credit card numbers um, there need to make sure they're classified and protected appropriately. But then a very common example too is in case description, right? So now I can see on the case object, I do have credit card information stored here. We can see on the specific field um, what patterns are detected. So now when I'm looking at it, it will show me the records. And I see, matter of fact, in the description field that there are credit card numbers stored there, which is not what we want. We want to make sure that those are being stored in the appropriate places. So Einstein is great for being able to really identify where you might have sensitive data stored uh, in those unknown places. Now, if we shift gears and jump into encryption, um, Einstein Data Detect is the first step of data classification. Um, now we're in Own Backup Secure, and Einstein Data Detect and Own Backup Secure are completely complementary. Um, Einstein Data Detect helps you get that baseline of where you might have sensitive fields, and Own Backup Secure allows you to assign value to that data and then use it as an input to Shield. So for example here, um, we can search across the entire system and apply sensitivity to fields, but now I, mean, I can see all my confidential fields that have been classified in this org here in one view. And I know these are what we're going to want to encrypt with Shield. If we take a look now at the encryption analyzer, I think the thing to keep in mind with encryption is that um, the data gets turned into an encrypted state, right? So that's where it can have impact on functionality within the org. And Salesforce has a 96 page guide. Yes, it is 96 pages. You can see that right here. Um, I'm not going to scroll through all of it, but it is all of these different things that you need to consider before encrypting a field. So it's a lot of work and it's really difficult to do and then maintain it over time. So what we've done within Own Backup Secure is we've automated that analysis. And the benefit there is that you can get quick time to value out of Shield um, and successfully encrypt your sensitive information without having any downstream impact on the configuration in your org. So um, the way that works is we have data classification as an input. Here we'll see our sensitive fields that we identified with data detect and on backup secure. And now I can see fields that have already been encrypted at rest, which is great. Um, and I can see fields that are blocked for various reasons, whether it's a formula field, any custom code, report filters, list views. This is where we're taking that 96 page guide and we're automating that analysis so that you know exactly um, based on the rules of platform encryption, what fields are supported today and what fields you need to remediate before encrypting them. Cool, so um, summary here is we'll help you uh, get up and running with encryption very quickly and we'll um, give you the ability to maintain that over time. Uh, I think if we pop back here into the slides real quick, we'll jump into Field Audit Trail next. And Field Audit Trail gives you tremendous capability to set your tracking um, and your policies based on that. Um, but it has to be done with the metadata API with what Salesforce provides out of the box. So um, specifically for configuring your policies. So what we have here is in-owned backup secure, a purpose-built interface that sits directly on top of Field Audit Trail where you can easily implement it uh, very quickly, where now I can see all my objects and fields in a single view. Um, we have data classification as an input here as well. So we'll set the tracking on our sensitive fields. You might notice this brown face. This is just calling out that we have high-risk fields that are not being tracked. So I'll set the tracking on my fields and then I can configure my policies for when we would like to remove it from the related list and then when we would like to permanently delete it. So um, 
great way to really get immediate value out of field audit trail. You don't have to do any work with the metadata API to set up your policies. It's all point and click here and using data classification as that key input. Um, so that's really it with field audit trail. We'll help you get up and running very quickly and you have a purpose built UI to manage it here. Um, so now let's let's bring it home with event monitoring, right? So event monitoring provides great capability to monitor user activity within the system. And there's a couple things we'll touch on. We'll touch on transaction security policies and then the Einstein Analytics app. So if we jump back in here, um, the first thing we'll start with is transaction security policies. And um, we can go into setup menu. And if you just search in the quick find search here for transaction security policies, that will show us um, where they are and where you can set them up. There's two options. You can do it with a uh, admin interface, which I'll show in a moment, and then with custom code as well. Um, and if we take a look at one that I have here, a very basic one, just for a report um, on an object where I know there's sensitive information. So on Backup Secure, will help you identify that where um, over 5,000 rows are trying to be exported from the system. So it's very simple to set the if then conditions, and then we can set the ability to force MFA or block and notify based on that with a custom notification. So it's an incredibly powerful feature. If we take a look at how it works now, I'm on a high net worth contacts report. I should not be able to export this report, but maybe I'm a disgruntled salesperson and I'm leaving the organization in a couple of weeks and I wanna to try to export this report from the system. When I do that, now it will show me here um, that I do not have the permissions to do that. So there's an ability where it blocks. Sorry, buddy, you can't do that. Uh, the operation you requested isn't allowed due to your security policy. So uh, there's more detail we could go in there, but incredibly powerful feature of event monitoring with transaction security policies. Cool. Um, well, I know we're a little tight on time, so we'll touch very quickly on Einstein Analytics. And this comes with your event monitoring licenses. So point of clarification, sometimes um, customers aren't sure if it comes with their event monitoring or not, Salesforce gives you two CRM analytics licenses as a part of what you have with event monitoring. And then you have this pre-built event monitoring analytics dashboard, where now I can see um, that as a part of that, we have purpose-built dashboards that come out of the box, didn't have to do any work to set these up, in, um, other than just the basic assigning the permissions and running the app. But then once we take a look at these, we can see different insights related to specific events. So for today, we focus on events uh, such as our reports. We can see um, different report trends by user where users are downloading reports over time, um, how users are accessing certain reports. I can see that this Bob Bandit guy is accessing, accessing this high net worth contacts report uh, many times. So this is important why we wanna have transaction security policies in place on that. So there's a lot of insights here. Um, into what your do users are doing in the system. And from a uh, performance standpoint, you can see how long the load time takes for reports and be alerted based on if it takes longer than a certain uh, threshold where you can define certain notifications here within the CRM analytics app. So this is a great way uh, to get immediate value out of event monitoring. And then again, it comes out of the box with your Shield event monitoring licenses. Cool, um, Lucy, how are we doing on time? I was going to say, you've got plenty of time. Um, well, we're, we're all good on time. Um, I know you wanted to do it in 30 minutes and you've achieved that. So a lot of information and uh, thank you so much for that. Um, were you finished with the demo or did you want to continue? Um, I think so. I think um, yeah. there's a lot of different reports here we could show with the event monitoring analytics, but know that it'll come out of the box um, with that. That is a part of Shield event monitoring. You can get you know visibility both from a security as well as a performance standpoint. Nice, nice, just at 29 minutes. <laughs> Fantastic job. Um, and yeah, thank you again for sharing your knowledge there. Um, why don't we hop to the Q&A slide so people can find out about the resource we have to offer them. Perfect. Yeah, so there's a checklist there. I know some of you were asking in the chat during the webinar for resources. Um, we are going to be publishing a very comprehensive guide about Salesforce Shield. Um, with all of this knowledge that um, Devin's given us today and some of the other webinars the OWN Backup team have been running for some time. Um, such, such valuable content. So I really encourage you to check out their checklist and then um, watch some of their older webinars um, back as well. Um, right, so uh, 
shall we get started on the Q&A? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, perfect. I was going to say the thing that really stood out to me about Salesforce Shield um, was how much more you get with the field audit trail versus what you get with standard. Um, I think that was the real standout for me. But when yep. you started getting hands on with Salesforce Shield, um, I don't know how long you've been working with it, but sounds like some time. Um, what lessons did you learn? Like, what would you tell your younger self? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think um, the lessons we learned is that um, you really want to do it right up front and it gives you great capabilities, but it's certainly not a set it and forget it um, process. So you need to implement Shield and then maintain it over time. And also you don't want to waste time, right? Your security team doesn't want to waste time protecting medium or low risk information. So data classification too is really um, a great way to help guide your shield efforts, whether it's for fields you need to encrypt, fields you need to track, or with event monitoring, just knowing where to monitor. So event monitoring is a, uh, or data classification is a great way to really make sure that you're taking an efficient approach to shield and um, making sure that you're protecting all of your most sensitive information within the org. Mm -hmm, totally. And um, I remember thinking this is a really great tool to get the like uh, compliance and security teams and the Salesforce admin on the same page, like speaking the same language, because I feel that there's so much that can be overwhelming in that space um, once you start talking to the security team. So, yeah, it kind of keeps everything very um, yeah. aligned. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good point too, because what we've seen a lot is that you know, Salesforce administrators and teams, and I was an admin in a previous role, they are at 120% capacity, right? They have so much on their plate to support the line of business. And um, on the security side, they don't necessarily always have the uh, most visibility or experience with the Salesforce platforms. We really help bring those two internal teams together. Yeah. And that's definitely. what Shield will help with as well. Peace of mind for everyone. Yep. Um, what does it mean um, that data is encrypted at rest? Yeah, great question. So it means it's encrypted um, in the Salesforce data center. So it is application layer encryption with Shield and um, it will encrypt it at the field level. And what it means is when the data is stored, that it is encrypted while it is stored. So stored means the data is at rest um, and then it is in an encrypted state at that point. So um, Salesforce database agents who are working there, they wouldn't be able to see the data going through um, there because it is encrypted while it's at rest or stored. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, clues in the name. <laughs> um, you said that users can still see encrypted data from the UI, right? So um, yep. is there a way that you can obf obfuscate it to users who are in your system? Yeah, so great question. The, the best way to control that um, first is with field level security. Right. So with Shield, there's there's no obfuscation capability. Um, but what we recommend as a best practice is making sure that from a field level security standpoint, that everything adheres to the principle of least privilege. So users only have access to uh, fields that they need for purpose of their job function. Right. So the best way to control that is with field level security. Um, and then if you need to obfuscate and anonymize in lower environments, that's definitely uh, what we recommend. And um, on backup can certainly help with that. But as far as within production, the best first step um, for hiding it is really going to begin with field level security. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And then obviously the sandbox seeding and other ways that you can um, obf obfuscate. I can't say that word, obfuscate. <laughs> it's not It's not a word you say every day. Maybe you, yeah. but not me. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I got you. Hide, anonymize, you know, let's yep. uh, do all the synonyms. Right. Um, this is an interesting one, actually. How much is uh, of a learning curve is there for a Salesforce admin um, to get started with Shield? Um, there is a, a very significant learning curve. I think um, like it's security really is a separate domain if you think about it. Right. So um, there can be a significant learning curve. But the good news is uh, at own backup and Salesforce, we have a lot of resources to help you get started and we're obviously help, um, happy to help uh, you get up and running and, and get you the, the knowledge and the expertise uh, quickly. So we have a lot of domain expertise, a very experienced team, and we can certainly help. And there's a lot of great resources out there between on backup and Salesforce on Trailhead where you can uh, get hands on with Shield and learn the, the nuances of it. Mm, mm, 
Definitely. Um, and you said Einstein data detect was the newest of the four pillars, right? Of That's sure. correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you need a certain amount of data, like record data, for it to work correctly? Um, no, you don't need a certain amount of record data. It will scan based on what is whatever is in the org, and then the results will return based on that. So small or larger orgs, it will scan all of your data for those pat those five patterns of um, social security number, credit card, um, IP address, URL, and email, and then it will show based on however much data is there where um, you might have those patterns across your org. Great, and uh, that's the end of the questions, actually. Um, well, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, thank you for your questions as well. Um, got some nice feedback for you, Devin, in the chat. I think people really appreciated um, all of the inside scoop on Salesforce Shield. Um, so yes, uh, maybe we'll do another one at some point. <laughs> I'm Perfect. sure there's a lot more to speak about. <laughs> there certainly is, absolutely. Well, thanks everyone Great. for joining and thank you all for uh, having us today. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Devin. Bye-bye, everyone. All right, bye-bye, right. everyone.